Wow, isn't that wonderful? Well, here we are, right on time, right at the top of the hour, 10 in the morning on a beautiful August uh, Saturday. So welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to a presentation for professional development offered by the American College of Vedic Astrology. And so I, uh, wanted, I want to start out by saying that my intention is to be useful uh, to you. So I think that anything that I'm offering today is my intention is to offer a bit of what I do in a, in an, uh, in a consulting session. And by way of background, I, I, I simply want to say um, I, I'm honored to be the president of the American College of Vedic Astrology. As I just mentioned, my intention is to be useful in a practical way to uh, students of Jyotish and practicing Jyotishis. So um, I have to say at the outset that this is a, being a practicing Jyotishi is a sort of a unique uh, career choice, uh, but it is a choice and it's uh, becoming more and more a viable option as a, uh, as a, as a, a it, it's viable in terms of being a, a full-time, useful, professional practice to add value to society. Um, now I know that's a lot of adjectives in one place, but that's a, that's actually what I mean to reinforce. Um, sadly, especially in the West, um, you, you know, there's uh, there's been so much pollution uh, contributed by by commercial astrology. Now, often commercial astrology, in in my view, is is just the the, the pop Western uh, astrology. But what we're doing here is uh, we we are doing our very best to to retain the ancient uh, teachings of that have been useful to people for for thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years. And uh, the reason that the authentic Jyotish works so well in terms of an information technology is that the original material in the Shastras, you would know these as in, for instance, in, in Parashara or um, or Horasara, or any of the any of the ancient Jyotish Shastras. The reason that they still work today is that they have a, a, a they're they're universally true. They are both Sat and Mithya. They're both objective truth Sat and Mithya. The Mithya, the 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 cultural connotation of the use of of the knowledge of Jyotish. So I hope that doesn't sound too ponderous to you. Um, I, I want you to know that uh, I, I have quite a sense of humor. Now, I'm not actually talking about myself. I'm talking about uh, myself as a vehicle for Jyotish. So I have a spiritual name that was, uh, my spiritual name is Jyoti Devi. And uh, I, I try to present Jyoti Devi as the vehicle for being a, 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 a Jyotishi. Uh, Charlotte Benson is a, a, a whole other person. Uh, Charlotte Benson is really quite amusing. And... Uh, on that level, I have, uh, just so you'll know who you're dealing with here. You know, everything comes from a, a frame of reference, doesn't it? Um, I'm doing my best to translate Jyotish, but it has to come through the vehicle of my personality in a certain way. So uh, again, I, I, I warn people in advance, I have Mercury in Pisces. Uh, I, I say that a lot, just so you'll know, just so you'll, you'll have the general sense that there's certain things that everybody else knows that I just don't understand. However, I have, a, I have Jupiter in Pisces, too. I have four planets in Pisces in my 10th house. Of, you know, that's the house of career. So, I mean, thank God for Jyotish, because God knows what somebody like me with four planets in Pisces in the house of my career would get up to if we didn't have the beautiful, the beautiful vehicle of Jyotish. So, uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a comedian, because, you know, this is serious business, but... It, we, it, it also needs to be expressed in a lighthearted way. So this is what I tell my clients. And uh, I say, I am, I'm expressing what I have to say to you in a lighthearted way to amuse both of us, but, it is, but it's serious material. I take this, I take being, doing a consultation very seriously, uh, even, if it, even if there's a lot of laughter going on. And I, I think that uh, 
of course, everybody has their own methodology. If, if you're a practicing Jyotishi and you have your a Mercury Saturn conjunction, uh, then you'll, you'll have a, 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 a different style. But um, so that word style, I use that a lot too when I'm speaking with my clients. Uh, I'll point out something interesting in their chart and say, this is just your personal style. There's nothing either right or wrong about any of the material that we find in a, that we find in a, in a chart. So this is what my, this is what I use with my clients. Just the old fashioned, old fashioned, the old fashioned square charts. Less is more on here. I, use, I happen to use the glyphs, the hieroglyphics for the planets, simply because to me, they carry a lot of, a lot of information, but I've, I've just got simple things here. I got a little, a little dash. I got to have a Navamsha here, the, the dashas, Shadbala. Basically, the older I get, the older I get, the more I uh, ascribe to the, the concept of less is more. And so I'm also offering that to you as a, as a, as a, a, a basic concept. You know, there's so, Jyotish is so brilliant for being able to provide so many different measurements. We can measure things until, I don't know when, until the end of the Kali Yuga. Um, there's just so many ways to measure things and divisional charts and ways to, so many ways to measure things. But I, I do as a, as a practical matter, since what I do all day long is work with clients one-to-one. -one. I used to work with clients across my desk, but now of course it's uh, Zoom and Skype. Uh, but uh, again, the, the point for a professional practicing Jyotishi is to be able to convey the information. Uh, without, without talking so much about Jyotish, your clients are going to be concerned about how this applies to their life. They might be very interested in a certain, in the certain really rare planetary combinations, and they could be proud of them. Uh, naturally, people should be proud of their charts, don't you think? And, uh, but giving them digestible bits of information, I think, is, is the takeaway here. We're, we're here as Jyotishis to serve, to serve our clients, to serve society, however that can happen. So although we might know a tremendous amount about their, about their chart and the, the sort of the astronomical parts of Jyotish, again, I'm suggesting that less is more and to just make simple declarative statements or ask simple questions to, to further, uh, to further the, your consultations. So as you can probably tell at this point, my, um, my orientation here, uh, the, the American College of Vedic Astrology decided to offer these practicums on, uh, on, being, a prof, uh, on being a practicing Jyotishi uh, because there's, uh, as far as I can tell, there's not much of this material out in the world. Of course, there's every single thing in the entire world on uh, YouTube or wherever these things go. But um, uh, my, my intention is to help you in a practical way begin or maintain or refine or develop your professional practice of Jyotish. So this is a practice of Jyotish. It's not like we're practicing on our clients, but the idea here is that this to be done properly, it does take practice and experience. Yeah, so step one is to get yourself properly educated. This is a lifetime study. This is a multiple lifetime study uh, of, of, for Jyotish. So you might as well get started. No matter what your age or stage, uh, any, anything that you study is a, is a legitimate use of your time on this planet, I think. Uh, and uh, you'll be serving not only yourself, but other people ostensibly. So. Um, well, with that, I should probably stop myself. I've got plenty more ideas for you, but um, so our our uh, colleague and faculty member Ramdas Bill Sinclair is the producer for this uh, this program. So I wonder if uh, Ramdas is is this the point to open up to questions, or shall I still? Uh, do you, do you, uh, shall I still offer what I 
have to say about uh, my ideas about the professional practice of Jyotish. I, I thanks, Charlotte. This is great. Um, I think I'll ask people if you raise your hand over on the right hand side, I'll unmute you and then uh, you can ask questions. So um, I'll be scanning up and down the list of attendees to find the questions. But Charlotte, maybe you could, um, I was thinking of a question earlier. Oh, we have one here. This is from Vish. Go ahead, Vish. Hi, Vish. Wait, let me get his. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear my voice? Well, oh, Vish, is that you Let's asking see. whether we can hear your voice? Yeah, can you? I just making sure that you guys can hear me, hear my question. So, yes, I, um, Charlotte, I'm only about uh, three years into uh, doing readings for clients. And, okay. you know, when you start early on, um, you have insight, obviously. You look at a chart, you you add up what you see, and you have insight, and you share that with the client, and the client, you know, oftentimes very happy with that. But yes. there's always this feeling as a beginner thinking, did I get everything right? Did I, you know, do, you know, if another judge, she might have seen more things than I saw, did I leave something on the table? So I guess, you know, intellectually, I know that whatever shows up, shows up, and that is the right thing for that moment. That's sort of the interaction between client and Jyotishi. But how do you, do you eventually get over this feeling? Does it take time? Yes. Is it a matter of experience? And we just would love to hear your thoughts on, um, you know, this feeling of, hey, did I, did I do everything I could have? Is there something I missed out on? The answer to that is yes, 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 no, and yes. So, um, so here, here, here's, the, I hope that this is a helpful concept. So in, in my practice, again, I'm not talking about myself. I'm just letting you know from experience how I run, how I run a successful practice of Jyotish. We have, we have, we have definite time parameters. Uh, clients uh, reserve either one hour with me or 90 minutes. So within that, 90 minutes i have to say i mean 60 minutes rather is is that's just for touch-ups that's my term in, in this sort of world um because you know looking at looking at a chart i and i i make a point and maybe you want to do this too vish i um uh, even at a distance i show I'm, I'm always working with my client having them look at their own chart now of course they cannot read that chart uh, but just as a visual, I, I email them at their chart in advance. I have a printed copy of their chart on which I make my own notes about their situation. But um, I let uh, uh, to address your question in even in uh, even in 90 minutes. Yes, of course you're going to leave things out. But I think that you you whatever your uh, your system, whatever your system is for. Um, explaining their chart to them, that just has, you can only get as far as you can get. There is, as I tell my clients when we first meet, I know I sound like Austin Powers when I say this, but I say, there's at least one million things that I can tell you about this chart. However, we have 90 minutes and here's where we'll start. Please, here, here is your rising sign, all about your rising sign. There's the sign, Here's the Lord of your rising sign. Here's the position of the Lord of your rising sign. Here's the aspects to your ascendant. Your planets in your ascendant. Here's aspects to the Lord of your ascendant. That's your first house. That can take 15 minutes to be thorough about this. And then I typically go to, uh, here's your moon sign. The moon is the next important thing you need to know about your chart. That changes every, every two and a half days. Here's your moon sign. Here's where your moon sign is. Here's the Lord of your moon sign, etc. And as fast as you can talk, uh, you'll never, you will never get everything out. But in terms of priorities, I think that when you're preparing your, your session, when you're preparing your consultation in advance, I'm thinking that you're probably also looking at their, their dasha sequence and major transits to their birth chart. So I've found Believe it or not, I am intending to address your question, Vish. Yeah, the answer is yes, you get, with experience, you get used to this. You just have to give up on the idea of being comprehensive. When I tell people, especially for a new client, I, I say, this is, a, this is going to be a brief survey of your birth chart, a survey of your birth chart. By no means is it comprehensible. 
on a, on another, you know, after you have another 10 sessions with me, we'll probably have, we'll probably have gotten most of the details out of you, out of your chart. But when people come to, uh, when people come to a Jyotishi, there, yes, some people are just curious. Okay. And I'll indulge those people. I don't care why people are, I don't care why people want to speak with me. I'm happy to speak with them about their charts. Some people are just curious, but typically people are, uh, are, are asking for insight because of, um, um, maybe an urgent issue or, or, you know, maybe just having to make a, a decision about something. So that's also a way to prioritize what you are going to say to your client. Um, and, and it's another thing that I say to my clients, uh, I'll, you know, addressing your question, Vish, is I, I uh, again, I, I put the onus a bit on my client and I say, look at this chart. There's a lot of moving pieces here. We're not talking about your sun sign. We're going to be talking about all these different planetary combinations. I've, I've, I've seen, it's quite possible that in the last 50, almost 50 years of me being a practicing Jyotishi that I've seen, I, I've seen tens of thousands of charts. I don't want to say 50,000. It feels like 50,000, but that's a story for another time. I've seen a lot of charts. I've never seen the same one twice. And so, of course, you're going to miss saying something. But what I say to my clients is that lo looking at one of these charts, I am giving you my opinion about what I can see through the lens of my own eyes here. I'm giving your, you my opinion about your chart. And it's like looking, I use the analogy, it's like looking at... Um, a really elaborate, beautiful painting. I can look at, uh, we can look at so many things. We can look at the brush strokes down here in the left-hand corner. We can look at this, the colors. We can look at the composition. We can, it's like looking at the raft of the Medusa. There's so much to see here. So uh, don't worry about, don't worry about saying every, you'll never say everything anyway. Um, now, was that anywhere within a million miles of addressing your question? That was superb, Charlotte. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. Very insightful. Okay. And, and another thing, too, about starting out. You know, we all have to start somewhere. I do want to address this specific question, which I believe that uh, probably others that are listening would also have this concern. You know, this, this is the ocean of Jyotish. This is not, this is not a pond or a, a lake. This is the ocean of Jyotish. Have to get started somewhere. Well, as I would say to my clients after I say you have to do something, you don't really have to do this, but if you want to be a since you want to be a practicing jyotishi, get started somewhere. But you could uh, you could legitimately let uh, your client know that you are I mean, that you're you're beginning your studies, that you're starting. This is your you're apprenticing yourself. You're 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 apprenticing yourself. You still have uh, you're, you still have a firm grounding in uh, in the in uh, in your education, especially if you're educated at the American College of Vedic Astrology. I say that lightheartedly, but I'm very serious about that. Um, but, and you can, um, I mean, but do, don't, I know you wouldn't do this, Vish. I mean, I think you wouldn't do this, Vish, but you, I mean, don't pass yourself off as a master astrologer um, or, you, you know, you let people know that this is your opinion about something. But what I do tell uh, beginners too is that Jyotish as a language is so valuable, it's so profound, it's so sublime, it's so useful that even a crumb from the table of Jyotish is more valuable to many clients than six months of therapy, say. So just throw your breadcrumbs out there. Do your spiritual practice before you work with a, a client. I mean, I didn't happen to mention that, but please, you're, you know, you're just... You're just a channel for this divine information. You know, make sure the pathways are clear, however you can do that, too. That's actually an important point, which you didn't ask me about. But, but my intention, again, is to be useful uh, to you as, as, as practicing Jyotishis. And, uh, you know, we are, we're merely channels for the Jyotir Vidya. And uh, so asking for, asking for divine guidance is probably a pretty good idea. I do that every day. I'm not talking about myself. I'm just saying, as a practicing Jyotishi, I think that's highly, that's highly advisable. So, are you are you okay? Now, yeah. here's what I say. Here's what I say with to my clients. Are you okay with what we've done here so far, Vish? <laughs> yes, 
definitely. In fact, there's some something I might, if, if I might be so inclined to share. Um, but I've had clients where they've had readings done with with some of the big names and pros in our in our industry, uh, but they don't remember a thing at all from their readings. Yes. And it was just too much information for them. So I think your comment on doing your sadhana, doing your spiritual practice, allows you to really be present and be there to understand what it is that's important for them so that a client leaves with something very clear and very memorable that is relevant to them for the long term. Yes, thank you. I've had that same experience myself. Um, I want to go I want to go into two prongs on your comment, Vish, if you don't mind. I want to just let you know too, um, not, I'm not picking on anybody and I realize that this is common practice, but I choose not to refer to my consultations as readings. Uh, this do whatever you like. As I say, say to my clients and to my stepchildren, after I give them good advice, blah, blah, blah. And then, but on the other hand, do whatever you like. But uh, to differentiate what we're doing here as a profession in terms of sharing the, one of the highest wisdom teachings that there is on the planet so far, that being Jyotish, um, I call my sessions, sessions, consultations, meetings, conferences. Uh, if, I mean, I'm just putting that out there. That's been my thing since the 70s. Uh, it, and it, it really makes, um, to me at least, it differentiates between, uh, you know, something that's, you know, if we, could, if we were doing readings, uh, I mean, I know that's the common parlance, and I'm not picking on anybody. But if we were doing readings, it would just be, oh, this thing means this one thing, and this thing means this other thing, and here's this sentence here. It's not quite that that simple. And it takes, um, I, I, I'm very interested in taking the, the uh, public conception of, of Jyotish or astrology out of the realm of, of psychic readings or, I mean, yes, there is such a thing as psychic readings and some of them are very good and there's no, I'm not criticizing anybody about anything. But I just say, I just call my consultations consultations. So uh, that, that's one thing. And then Vish, you also mentioned, and I, I get the, have the same experience of having clients say, well, I, I, I always ask a new client, here's my terminology. I say, have you ever had this work, this, this type of work properly analyzed, properly done in the past? I say properly done in the past. And people will say, oh yes, I had this done by somebody. And, but I don't remember a thing they said. And I have to tell you, I'm shocked, surprised, dismayed, and confounded by that statement. Because, you know, we're talking about people love to hear about themselves, don't they? And um, so I think that I, I'm just looking at a pile of charts here on my desk of people that I've worked with this last week. I would say something. I mean, I think it's more useful to say uh, what just um, uh, uh, that. Um, oh, your your chart is really good for real estate. I had a client this week, and for whatever reason, gosh, I wish I could pull that up. Anyway, she had a powerful Mars and great planets in the fourth house, and the fourth house Lord was in dignity or something. And I said, you know, oddly enough, even though you're a media consultant in downtown Manhattan, your house is generally very good for real estate. I just tossed that off. Now, that's a broad, that's, a, that's an easy, it's a, that's a memorable statement especially if it's true, that's a, mem that's a very simple statement, memorable, and that can apply to many different things. That could say, you know, I, I, I've set myself up when I say, oh, your chart is really good for real estate. I don't say because of your fourth house, Lord, or plan is in the fourth house, or your Mars. Now, your house is, your chart is good for real estate. And that gives a person, that then that gives the person, the client, the permission to open up about, um, Oh, I was thinking of buying real estate, or is this a good time, or you know, going in that direction? So what this woman says to me completely, she had nothing to do with real estate, but she said, "My father, my father's in construction, and he wants to he wants to um, he wants to, to buy some properties, to fix and flip some properties." He said, "I would highly highly advise that. That would be something, even though you don't have experience with that, that would be easy for you." But back to I don't my clients don't re clients don't remember anything about their chart. Somebody's definitely definitely going to remember a simple statement like, "Your chart's good for real estate." So, I mean, that would that's my suggestion in terms of the type of language to use. Of course, again, I refer to myself as a vehicle. 
you can clearly see for yourself that I am a little old white lady in the West. So um, although we can talk about metaphysical and spiritual things, I mean, you know, we should be prepared to talk about whatever a client wants to talk about. Again, my, my entire orientation uh, uh, in serving clients is to be useful, to be useful. So when I talk about something, I say to myself, Charlotte, is that a useful concept? Yes, is typically the answer. So, so there, as, um, I mean, I hope that's helpful. Thanks, Charlotte. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That was very useful. Yes, Great, so this is Bill. Um, we have a question from Loretta, and she says, do you use specific software or books for the basic D1 chart? Do I use so, software books? Software or books. So if we want more information, Loretta, we can unmute you. Charlotte, would that be helpful? Well, yes, I use software. Oh, heck yes. Thank you, Lord, for software. Um, I happen to use Parashara's Light, uh, just for your information. Of course, you, you know, all my all my dear friends, mentors, and Jyotishacharya gurus have their software programs. Um, uh, Sri Jyoti Star is excellent. Uh, Kala so Software is excellent. Any software is any, again, I have Mercury and Pisces. Any software that you can actually implement is good. And yes, you just have to get your software. I mean, you need to save up your, your money for the, the software. And in terms of books, again, I come from a Western astrology uh, background. So the, one of the first books that I found in the, in the early 1990s was James Braha's classic, now it's a classic book, uh, called Ancient Hindu Astrology for the Modern Western Astrologer. That book was written for me. But I also suggest that to you because it's, uh, James Braha has translated some of the more uh, obscure passages and, and put them in practical Western terms. Uh, I hope that's useful to uh, I hope that's useful. If you're asking me for, for uh, referrals on, on my favorite books, well, or most, again, useful. Uh, useful is my concept. Is, uh, is that book by James Braha or any title by James Braha? Um, if you're, I mean, especially if you're a Westerner. I hope that makes sense. Um, of course, any book by Camilla Sutton is also just brilliant. From a completely different frame of reference. Any book by David Frawley, superb. Any of the books uh, from by uh, B.V. Raman are wonderful. Also James Kelleher's Path of Light, volumes one and volume two. Really, uh, those are just uh, really accessible, to me at least. And uh, and our, our beloved late ACFA president, Dr. William Levesey wrote two great books on uh, on uh, on Jyotish, uh, Beneath a Vedic Sky, Beneath a Vedic Sky, really well organized. You can tell that he's an engineer. You can tell that by his uh, writing. Beneath uh, uh, also Beneath a Vedic Sun, which is very uh, specifically oriented toward uh, analysis and diagnosis of uh, for career based questions. Or Bill Levesey, uh, Dr. William Levesey also write, wrote uh, Astrology Simply Put. That's pretty straightforward. Um, though, I mean, you know, I could go on and on. I'm looking at I'm looking at one of my bookcases. There's a lot of books in there. But the, the, the thing is to also, okay, first step, get your software. Read your books. You're just going to have to read. There's no getting around that. And then secondly, experiment with your unsuspecting friends, neighbors, or family members. As long as somebody has an accurate time of birth, uh, you can practice on them. And I mean, there, there is no substitute for practice. Uh, so I know I probably elaborated on that more than you were hoping for, but but there you go. Is that, are you okay with what how I've answered your question? So, um, how else can I? How else may I be useful to you? Uh, so I think I had a question here from Kenneth Miller. 
Uh, Kenneth, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Uh oh. Yeah, no, no, I was actually changing it into a typed question. I was just going to say, are you going to be covering um, how to get more clients for someone who's been uh, in practice for a couple of years and has maybe reached a plateau? Yes. Asking for a friend. Okay. That's, yes. <laughs> Yes, I do. Have, I, I I do have some practical ideas about that. Um, so, um, astrology Jyotish can be used as an adjunct to any professional practice, any other type of professional practice. And I do want to say at the outset, Kenneth, thank you for that. Thank you for asking that question. Um, I, I I want to say as practicing Jyotishis. My suggestion is to think of yourself as, as a physician, or as an attorney, or as a um, as a high class minister to a king. We should be holding cabinet positions. Consider yourself a as a, a high class professional. I don't, with all due respect to any attorneys listening in, as a, like an attorney, or uh, or a physician. We have valuable information for which we have sacrificed and educated ourselves. We, at this point in our, uh, at this point in 2020, Jyotish deserves and has merited and earned respect from society. So, my my opening uh, statement here in terms of addressing uh, Mr. Miller's question about um, where other sources of clients can come from. I'll use, I'll use my practice as an example because I know this works. Um, it just so happened that, uh, it just so happened that I, a, a cl client came to me, came to me uh, and, and she is an executive coach. Now executive coaches make giant piles of money for uh, providing information to their clients, which are with all due respect to any executive coaches who are listening, that is, you know, like one tenth of what Jyotish can provide. So my um, it, I would suggest uh, my executive coach started bringing uh, her clients in. She that part of of her executive coaching fee was a session with me to see what kind of cycle they are, what kind of what kind of timing cycle they're in. Uh, it's you know so here's my point that for you um, or for anyone you you might want to reach out to executive coaches. And, and offer them a free session with you so that they can learn what, uh, what, what can Jyotish do for you and or your clients. So that has been, for me, has been a, a real consistent source of, of client referrals, um, executive coaches. And then uh, also, if you can manage to get yourself on a podcast of any sort, um, I'm a frequent guest on clients' podcasts, and that is a game changer. Uh, and all right, found that to be in my in in my case. Um, now, I suppose you could go. I I haven't I never solicit business. I mean, I'm just too busy. But I suppose you could somehow go. One could somehow go and. Um, uh, find out podcasts that have to do with, I mean, any, gosh, almost any kind of self-improvement, spiritual development, market timing. I mean, God knows what you can, of course, as you well know, you can apply Jyotish to any, any aspect of life. So I think to just to, just to reiterate, reaching out and offering a complimentary session, use the word complimentary, not free, if you don't mind, session to uh, an executive coach just to see how their timing, just to, just to, as an adjunct to uh, the timing for their clients and the, the podcast situation. Uh, because podcasters are always looking for content and for guests, aren't they? Um, and then perhaps it, it used to be, you know, back in the day, you could, um, uh, I, I was often trotted out by a local TV station uh, for commentary on, I mean, God knows what, um, on anything. Um, um, so I, I think that it, it, if you wanted to reach out to the 
to the old fashioned media of, of TV or radio. The, the beauty of Jyotish is that there's always something to comment on. There's always something going on, isn't there? I mean, no, no matter, I mean, any day of any year of any decade, you can find something worthwhile to discuss or to offer, at least even to just offer about the planetary situations. Eclipses, comets, the conjunction, uh, I mean, the uh, seven out of nine planets in dignity in mid-September um, of 2020. I mean, anything is interesting. Uh, so those would be my three recommendations. Oh, here's another thing too. Um, I used to do this before I got so busy that I couldn't do anything additional. Um, uh, for my, my I used to just simply email a client on their birthday saying happy solar return uh, with all best wishes, Charlotte. That was it. Happy birthday. I send you my blessing and my best wishes. Not if you need some additional information, you know where to find me. No, no, no. It's just happy birthday. Um, that was, I remember that was one thing that I used to do. So, um, but also as a practical matter, this is a practical matter from a Pisces point of view, pray to serve the Jyotirvidya. I do that every morning. I pray to serve the Jyotirvidya. If that produces clients, great. However, I can serve the Jyotirvidya. Um, it's a step in the right direction. So, Ken, is that is some of that's practical? I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Fantastic. Thank you. Are you sure? I mean, um, I'm trying to think what normal. I'll call you privately later. No, I'm kidding. It really was a great answer. <laughs> But seriously, those executive coaches and podcasters. Well, oh, I also, although this is, well, what the heck? You might as well go here too, if you can. Since, listen, you know, since I believe that you have the credentials, you know, let me let me go off on this tangent in order to continue to address your 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 question. You know, we have we have credentials after our name. Uh, uh, we are we have titles or credentials of some sort. We are, we are Akva Jyotish Ratna, for instance. You have titles after your name. Now, the general public does not know what those titles mean, but they know that they are a title of some sort. So, okay, step one to, incre you know, to improve your practice. Get your credentials, use them after your name. Step two is, the, here's where I was going with this particular one too. I also somehow miraculously uh, have a lot of clients that are uh, either psychologists or psychiatrists. I mean, MD psychiat psychiatrists. Somehow psychiatrists have found me for, and for their own personal use. Uh, I mean, use. Yeah, they're using me for information, which is fine. Um, the, uh, there, you know, Jyotish is a brilliant adjunct to both uh, psychotherapeutics, uh, psychotherapeutics and psychology. So you might, if you have the proper credentials, an email will be read by a person. Pick, pick a psychologist or a, or, or a uh, psychiatrist uh, and say, would you like, uh, would you like a would you like me to look at your chart? Would you like a complimentary session to to show you how uh, how authentic astrology can be used as a tool for uh, of for analysis, or maybe diagnosis, but at least at least analysis. So I mean, this is a natural. This is a Jyotish is a natural fit for at least psychologist or um, psychotherapy, uh, and of course, every as everybody knows, uh, the great Swiss psychologist. Um, Carl Jung, Carl Jung uh, was a, also a great astrologer, and so you've already got an inroad with psychologists because of of Carl Jung's work with astrology. Um, so, yes, astrology is a great adjunct for uh, for for medical professionals. May I, um, may, I may I interject one little thing? So oh. one thing, 
one thing I've done at like my local astrology club, because like, I'm in a big city, we have an astrology group that's been meeting for years and I'm kind of the token Vedic astrologer there. But I'll have yeah. people come up to me in the break and they'll be like, oh, you're the guy that does Vedic astrology. And they'll ask me a question about some planetary combination. And I'll start to answer it. And, and this happened to me years ago. I started answering the question and I paused. I said, wait a minute, is this something that's actually in your chart? And they were like, yeah. And I said, I'm sorry, I only give good news away for free. And I have used that line, and maybe it's because the way I deliver it, but I have gotten a lot of clients by using that line because they're just tired of astrologers who tell them nothing but good things. And then they end up paying me for a reading to like get the full story. So I'll just throw that out there as something. God bless you, dear. Well, good. You know, there's just as there, there are as many techniques as there are personalities. Uh, uh, interpreting interpreting jyotish um but again my my well okay so how else may i be useful to our so we, uh charlotte we also have a question from nadia so nadia if you want to unmute yourself i'm unmuting you now Hi, uh, Ed, it's actually I'm here with Simon, so he's going to speak. Hello. Uh, I just overheard uh, you say, Charlotte, that you are using Parashara's light. And as your student, um, my students get 30% off of Parashara's light. So as your student, I think everyone here who is listening to you should be eligible for that. So email sales at parashara.com and let them know you're my student you get 30 percent off which is 100 bucks it's nothing to sneeze at um and so instead of 300 300 you get it for about 210 or something like that so just that offering is, that for everyone listening that is fabulous of course i would have no no idea that there's something practical like that that's wonderful to know um yes I mean, they, they they all they all all the softwares work, but but thank you for that, thank you for that, Simon. Did you want you to heckle? Me? Did you want to heckle me in some way? <laughs> no, but I think you look great and you sound great. <laughs> oh yes, thank you for my very, yes, thank you for my high resolution webcam. As I was telling your 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 beautiful colleague, it's it's sometimes better to see me in low res, but here we are. Anyway, I disagree. Thank you. We both disagree, Charlotte, and we love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You make my life joyful. So. Charlotte, so, we have a question from Phyllis Smith. So Phyllis, I'm unmuting you now. Phyllis, if you want to hit the, um, the microphone button up on your top right-hand corner. Oh, sorry, that was an error. Just saying hello. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Hi. You're just saying hello. Didn't you want to heckle me or something? No, I'm just kidding. So we also have a couple other comments here. Um, uh, Brianna Keith um, asked, um, Charlotte, did you have to solicit clients when you were first starting? Um, how long did it take you to get a steady flow of clients? Um, also, I think we're a natural adjunct to yoga studios, Ayurvedic doctors, and acupuncturists. Those are great questions, Rihanna. Thank you. Yes, those are great, great questions. And just working backwards, yes, I forgot about the entire yoga community. Good Lord, how could I forget them? Yes. Um, so, uh, well, yoga studios happen to be struggling right now because of uh, this contagion of cooties uh, out there. But but they, they also, uh, yoga studios, I, re I remember having done in the past, um, uh, oh, I don't know what, know your nakshatra or uh, something along those lines. Yes, very good idea. Just to even talk about uh, something uh, topical for a yoga studio. Uh, would be the the new moon in a nakshatra, um, or you know, just again keeping it simple. Uh, or yes, you're very you're 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 absolutely right about that. I forgot to mention that. And of course, Ayurveda. Um, every Ayurvedic student should 
know about Jyotish as well. Uh, so very, very good point there. And in terms of, did I ever have to advertise? I don't remember ever having done that. What, what, and I started my practice in the early 1970s. And the, things, were, uh, things were different back then. Uh, it just so happened that uh, I started with my, with my friends. You know, when you're young, all your world is around your friends. I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was a teenage bride and I was going to college studying psychology and astronomy and, and any other thing that I thought would benefit my astrological uh, uh, education as well. But I just started with my friends and then, and, uh, then referrals came along. And then back at that point, I think I was writing articles for newspapers if they asked me to do this. There used to be a thing back in the day called newspapers. They were made out of paper and you read the news in them. And uh, some of them would have articles about astrology in them. So uh, I did that sort of thing. But um, really, if, if you're good, you'll get referrals, dear. Now, your question was, how long did this take? God, I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry to be sloppy about this. I, I, it's been a lifetime practice to to get to get where I to get where I am. It's been it takes a, yes, it takes a while, but it's slow and steady, slow and steady. But um, people these days have the advantage that uh, at least there's the there is the um, there's becoming more of a pop popular understanding of the differentiation between Western astrology, the caricature, with all due respect to Western astrology, the caricature aspect of Western astrology and the and the accurate, more scientific scientific approach of of Jyotish. So the the way has been paved. The way has been paved. Thanks for thanks to the pioneers in the form of, of my my first uh, Jyotish guru, uh, Dr. Dennis Harness and Dr. David Frawley and you know, those people back in the day that brought, uh, that brought Jyotish to the West in the early 1990s. Um, you, you know, you've got a better opportunity now to, 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 to state that you're doing Jyotish. You're doing, as I call it, authentic astrology. I, to, to someone that's not, that does, that's not so initiated in astrology, uh, I say that their Jyotish is authentic astrology that there's a lot in that particular word. I mean, uh, but I, I, we do have to differentiate between the, uh, the, the pop commercial astrology and the authentic professional, uh, uh, the pop, uh, pop astrology uh, com on a commercial level and what you're doing as, a, as, a, as an analyst, a, a, a therapist, a, uh, no, don't call yourself a therapist, but, um, I would say that if you can understand what your own motivation is, if you understand your own sun gulp, why are you doing this? Why are you studying Jyotish? What is your intention? If you can clearly state that to, to yourself, your clients will magnetically show up or come, come, to, come to you. Of course, you need a website. Um, and, uh, and every other thing that, that, you, um, that you already know you need to have to make yourself accessible. But I think that bit about your son, Culp, your intention is, is, uh, is, is a useful idea for you. I send you my blessings. Whoever asked that question, God bless you. Put yourself out there. Do you have the chart to be a professional Jyotishi? Now, that could open up an entire new level of discussion, couldn't it? But if you have, uh, if you have, uh, if you have determined for yourself, that you have the chart for a, for a, 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 a to be a successful Jyotishi, go for it. The, you, the way has been paved. Um, the way has been paved for you. So, so there. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, I have another question, kind of in a similar line here. Uh, Cassandra asked, you know, she's noticed a drop in clients since coronavirus with people having less money to spend on uh, consultations. Can you address this? Yes. Well, I, I um, at the beginning of the, the pandemic, I, I dropped my fees, uh, not because I needed to, but just as a gesture. Um, so, yes, this is a, a, a fees for 
fees for Jyotish sessions. I've had this debate with certain people frequently, um, and I'm I'm of the uh, I'm of the mind to make yourself available. Make yourself available. Uh, if you if 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 you are more available to clients in need, if you reduce your fee, you can always raise it again later. But again, I think that speaks really. Uh, I mean, I think that speaks to your authenticity and your and your integrity to adjust uh, adjust rates in in this uh, in this sort of climate. Um, you know, Cassandra, I think it may be uh, you have an interesting name for a practicing Jyotishi, but um, I think it may be that uh, th there's an issue in your in your own in your personal chart as well. That, that there's a, a, a drop in clients. You might also want to adjust the length of your sessions. I do that too with, uh, with established clients. Um, uh, you know, if somebody needs just half an hour, everybody can afford what? Anybody can afford $100 for a half an hour. Am I going to, am I, you know, am I going to, am I going to get fired? Am I, I mean, well, that opens, uh, never mind about the questions, but you might want to consider that. That's a win-win situation. You know, I mean, really, as a matter of fact, how hard is it to sit and chat with somebody about important matters? It's not that hard. You are, if you already have the experience, yes, you've you've uh, uh, you you've taken the time to calculate their chart and have an, in, an initial input session with your client. Um, uh, I don't know how long that will take you. It shouldn't really take that long to uh, set up a chart and um, and then offer them a, just a half an hour COVID special or something along those lines. You're performing a service, they're getting the valuable information. And uh, and then the, the win, win situation is you've got just that much more experience and that person, that client is gonna be so grateful that that person will, will refer you. I mean, ideally what you're looking for is refer, uh, I mean, well, maybe. I think the ideal situation is a referral and repeat uh, practice. That way you don't have to explain everything every time. Uh, but I hope those suggestions are useful. Yes, lower your fees and or make, this, and or make the session shorter. Oh, and here was the part, I, I, I just alluded to the fact that I'm in constant scholarly debate with certain people about their fees. And yes, Here's the thing about Jyotish. The knowledge that can be gained through Jyotish is so valuable that in reality, yes, we should get $1 million an hour for this, for this knowledge. As practicing Jyotishis, we should get $1 million an hour. But on the other hand, since it's priceless, since it's priceless, we, we also don't have to charge, I don't know, $500 an hour. I know the Jyotishis that do charge that, and it sounds really good, and it makes them seem like they're really high class or whatever. But are you serving your clients that way? People that can afford to pay $500 an hour for a session don't really need to speak to a Jyotishi, do they? Um, now, I'm, I'm saying that in a lighthearted way, but just, you know, just to make the point, we have the knowledge, make it accessible. Um, I know that any any of you that are watching this could go on my my little website and find out that uh, I charge, uh, I don't charge, the fee for a 90 minute session with me is $300. Now, actually for a person with my much, uh, my uh, level of experience, that's, that's not too much. Many of my clients tell me that I should raise my fees, but during this, you know, until this gets, gets uh, straightened out, I'm not going to. Um, in a 90 minute session with me uh, is, I, I realize that some of my clients have to forego something or they sacrifice something in, in order to be able to, to speak with me, but that puts the onus back on them to, to really do the best they can to follow my suggestions or my advice or whatever that is. But keep back, back to your initial point, I think. Keep your fees, make yourself accessible. You're doing a noble service. Make it, keep yourself accessible is my, is my advice. I hope that's helpful. Thanks, Charlotte. That's really good information. I think that's one thing that everyone can come to you for is that real nuts and bolts information, you know, like that we're all wondering. Because I think pricing is a huge issue. And yeah. we don't 
oh, and it, it talks about our self worth, our value, or all that kind of stuff. You, it's you want to have enough where people respect the information. You don't necessarily want to sit and give it away for free, but yeah, so that's very helpful guidance. And I think astrologers should be much more open about that and talk about it with each other so that we yeah. have a, appropriate levels. Yeah. So um, Shailish, and I, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, he has a very interesting question. Ver Vedic astrology does not use outer planets, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune. Can you oh. throw some light on why? Yes, Charlotte, I know. <laughs> some light on why Vedic uh, does not use these planets. That's a question I ask myself every day. Um, I, I'm, again, you're, you're, you're hearing my, uh, my Jupiter, Mercury, Mars conjunction. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know why they don't use them. There's because possibly there's a, there's already enough. Um, there's enough things to look at. I mean, if you put the Upagrahas on there and all these other points, and uh, there's enough to look at. I don't know why they don't. Um, back, you know, there there are perhaps. I hope Andrew Foss, Doctor Andrew Foss, is not listening to this to this broadcast, but. Um, in the Shastras, they do mention the the uh, something that could be construed as the outer planets, which would be used during the Kali Yuga, for for Kali Yuga era Jyotishis. Um, but Uranus is associated with Prajapati. Neptune is associated with Varuna. Uh, Pluto is associated with Kubera or um, or um, Lord Yama. Oh, I didn't mean to say that out loud. But in any case, uh, why they don't, I don't know. But I have to say that, you know, I got over being worried about being a heretic long ago. Um, when I first started st studying and practicing uh, astrology, uh, it was actually, it was actually illegal. What I was, what I was doing, the practice of astrology was illegal. I live here in the wild west of Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, so I was used to being a heretic and doing the work of the devil. Uh, so now when, um, when, when classically trained traditional Jyotishis say, there's no such thing as outer planets, they say, well, you carry on, carry on, carry on. I have so much experience with outer planets. I, I don't know how I could actually do my work, my, my, do so well in my practice without them. Uh, they're very valuable. Um, that could be a whole other conversation, but, um, I, no, I don't know why, no, I don't know why. I wonder if you use outer planets, I would highly recommend that. Um, you could put them into any soft, any of the, any of these software programs will also allow you to select and use uh, out the, the three outer planets. They're fun. Well, some of them Thank are fun. You, That's very good. Um, I'll go on the other side of the question and say the reason I don't use them is because I can barely manage the planets I've got. <laughs> They keep me busy, and I never, I never did Western, so I haven't ever really been trained in it. But I yeah. do know around India and in many places, people are using them effectively. And what you've said earlier, whatever is working, if it gets you to the truth and means something, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, from my experience of using the outer planets is they just save time. Uh, if Neptune is going over something, we're gonna, that's how we're going to start that discussion. Uh, so. Okay, great. So no. Fred has made a couple comments. Earlier he commented that Hart to Foe is another great author to read. You know, True. there's so many, but I thank you, Freddie, for sharing that. And he also yes. mentioned here that um, in his view, the outer planets are more for generations. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there um, for ongoing discussion. Yeah, um, say that to somebody that's got a moon Pluto conjunction. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, there are so many wonderful books that I didn't mention. I just, again, me being just the 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 uh, just the the little simple village Jyotishi that I am here. Those were, those were um, some of my my top five. But yes, Light on Life uh, by Hart Defoe. That's that's really wonderful material. Um, oh, Bepin Bahari too. 
I love Bepin Bahari. Uh, but, you know, there's so many books that I love. Um, I have Rahu in the ninth house. You can imagine what my library looks like. So. Dr. Charek's books, also excellent. Yes, 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 of course. I Dr. think Jyotish is a reason to buy more books. <laughs> That's what I yes, think. It is. And, the, and Sam Jeppy too is, uh, he has a modern, modern iteration of things. Great, and, great. Uh, oh, and Andrew Foss's books uh, on the, uh, the yogas of the planets, the mantras, those are beautiful. Those are so powerful. Yeah, I, love, yeah. I love Linda Johnson's work on the, on the goddesses. Uh, Richard Houck's book. Uh, there's just so many, yes, there's just so many wonderful books. Well, of course, now here's something that I didn't, maybe I just tossed this off, but volume one and two of Parashara Hora Shastra. This must be in your library. Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. I mean, if you're going to call yourself a professional Jyotishi, that must be on your bookshelf. It's a rare moment for me to be that emphatic about anything, but there you go. Um, oh yeah, Ronnie Gale Dreyer's, Dreyer's book. Yeah. Uh, uh, Robert Svoboda's books. Yes, there's just so many wonderful books. Um, um, yes. So I, we have a, a, a comment here from Larissa also. She shared that um, her accumulation of tools in the box began with yoga and Ayurveda, okay. incorporating a kind of work. And now she's learning, developing um, Jyotish, she's in, she says, in her infancy, to be able to offer more comprehensive information for private yoga clients. And then I think she, she has a second comment here, and I think it's a continuation. Um, yeah, she said, um, thanks for covering the pricing uh, topic. She struggles to set a price since um, her input is more comprehensive. I think those already practicing finding a local yoga studio or teacher to extend your services to is especially important since most Western yoga training programs do not cover Vedic astrology. Yes, that that's you. You really add value uh, by you. You could really add value in, in that particular medium. And uh, the thing is that everybody loves astrology. The truth is, everybody loves astrology. They just do astrology. Any kind of astrology. People love astrology. So you know, we all should be. Gosh, we all should be really uh, successful and, and useful uh, in the practice of astrology. Somehow, somehow. Great. Um, but Larissa, congratulations, um, bless your heart. I send you every bit of, of support that I can for your, uh, for your continued studies. You're, you're really on to something here. Eric um, asked a question. Uh, he's asking, can you comment on coming Mars retrograde in September um, regarding situations in the US, COVID, riots, stock market, et cetera? I suppose that I could. Yes, the answer to that is could I? Yes, I could. Will I? That's a question. I, I think I would, if, it, if it's Eric, again, I'm kind of funny, but I, I, I think it would, we could, um, we could elaborate on your question about Mars in terms of um, another, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, another tool I have when I'm working with my clients. I'm going to show you something. Don't laugh. This is what I, as a, as a professional practicing Jyotishi, this is, I also use, I have made myself a little hand-drawn, as you can clearly see, as appalling as this is, I use this with every client. I mean, I just have, um, I, I, I have this available to talk about the position of any planet in it at any given time. I mean, I also have, you know, tools and, proper planetary placements. But so for instance, just to start with your, to start with your, uh, your, your, your comment on the um, stationary retrograde Mars in his own sign. Uh, yes, I would comment on that in a, in a person's chart. Uh, if I, in fact, I was doing that last night. 
talking about, I was talking to an adorable person who is uh, Aries rising. And we were just talking about the effect of transits. Now you're asking me about the position in the sky in a mundane way. Uh, but I think to apply this to the practice of Jyotish, which is what we're supposed to be here for today, um, if you you would point that out, you would you would caution your client. That's the word I use, caution, uh, about uh, September 8th or 9th, September 8th and 9th, rather, uh, when when Mercury is, I mean, excuse me, when uh, Mars is, is stationary retrograde in Aries, whatever house that falls in in their chart is going to be subject to subject to some uh, intense scrutiny. Now, um, I know that your question is, it's just like my clients, except my clients have been trained not to ask me these questions. My clients used to say, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? And of course, I immediately get up in somebody's grill and say, do you mean what is going to happen with your cooperation and your participation? That's what you really mean to say, isn't it? So you're asking, you're asking a simple question. What's going to go on with the with a stationary retrograde Mars. I have to tell you that although, again, here comes a heretical statement. I was hoping that somebody would ask something like this so that I could go off on my own personal rant about this. Okay, we're professional Jyotishis. We know that a planet in a certain position in the sky is very likely to produce a certain discernible, measurable, repeatable effect and have based on evidence, we've seen this in the past and we'll see it again and we know what this means. We know what this can mean. However, I believe that things are changing now where it's more incumbent upon, <clears throat> excuse me, it's more incumbent upon us as spiritually developed, well-educated, broadly educated uh, people to say, here's the best use of a condition which could be fraught. Yes, having a having retrograde, Mars is powerful, it's military on the sign of Aries and it's stationary retrograde. Mars might be having Mars might be having a problem with itself. How can we help Mars? I think that is a more useful question. How can we help Mars? Now again, I warned you, I have four planets in Pisces. <clears throat> but I thought about this a lot. Now, if we're not doing anything and we're just doing the in the in the Cartesian world of cause and effect. Okay, yes, Mars is stationary retrograde. There could be some sable rattling. People could become more uh, reactive. People could become more territorial. People be could become more pitta aggravated. You know, this applies to every level, on an individual level or on a or on a, uh, or, or on a, um, or on a, a cultural social movement level. Yes, Mars stationary is not such a great thing. Uh, but again, I I truly believe. Thank you for giving me a platform to to say this that. There's an interaction between between us as individual incarnated human beings and the planets. There's an interaction there. Why not send let let's send love and prayers to Mars? Boy, that's a statement for the ages. Hmm? Uh, what will happen? Well, depends on how we act react individually, doesn't it? Will there be certain people that are going to use the feelings that could be generated by having Mars? retrograde in this particular uh the stationary retrograde in this particular p position could it uh could it aggravate them sure those people are going to be aggravated anyway will there be more riots i think that was your implied question maybe maybe not i wouldn't make that kind of i wouldn't make that kind of prediction the prediction that i would make about that is that people here, here, if, if if you were my if you were a client and you were asking how how might this play out in your individual chart, I would say watch yourself, watch um, yourself in terms of the tendency to be rea to be reactive. Uh, I mean, I could just stop stop there for this given period of time. Get more physical exercise. It's a simple, you know. Again, less is more. That's a useful piece of information for someone uh, that's, that's got Mars in an aggravated position. Uh, Mars aggravated in the in the in the wherever that happens to fall in their in their chart. You know this could uh, this could benefit people depending on where it on where it falls. But again, it has more to do with there is an interaction between how things play out in the outer world and individual consciousness. I'm deadly serious about that statement. 
So it's incumbent upon us. We can we can see where where there where where there are sense where there are potential sensitivities. So uh, thank you for indulging me on that that little tirade. Uh, I'm not prepared to say what is going to happen. We that remains to be seen based on our individual participation with this the position of Mars. I'm also a big advocate. Uh, uh, this is an extension of that idea uh, of of actually doing planetary darshan, planetary darshan. Go outside tonight, look in the, depending on where your atmospheric conditions, look in the eastern horizon. You'll see beautiful Jupiter, blazing away, blazing away in the sky. You know, where's we're astrologers? We're supposed to, you know, it wasn't that meant. It wasn't that long ago. When our entire, um, we were informed entirely about observing what went on in the sky. Yes, now we're looking at our screens. That's quite handy. I'm grateful for that. However, I mean, connect with uh, you, you connect with the presiding deities in these in these planets. Um, it will be when Mars is in the position to be retrograde. You know, planets are only retrograde. Well, superior planets, planets beyond the orbit of uh, the Earth are, can only be retrograde when they're a certain distance from from uh, from the, the Earth and the Sun. So Mars will be visible when it's retrograde. And also Mars will be closest, typically planets are closest to the Earth when they're retrograde as well. It just works that way. Here's my entire point. Notwithstanding what I just said about the astronomy of these planets, go outside and, and uh, find Mars. You know what Mars looks like. It's a dull, reddish, steadily glow. You find that in the sky. Um, and see what you can do to assist Mars. I haven't, or I've never heard anybody else say something like this. So this is an original thought, but again, what the heck, four planets in Pisces. So, but in the meantime, you can go out tonight. If you uh, go out and, uh, and, and, uh, I, I, and look, look at Jupiter. I was standing outside uh, uh, last night with a friend looking at Jupiter and saying, oh, there's the presiding uh, deity in Jupiter, Brihaspati. She, she coached me on how to properly pronounce Brihaspati, for which I'm eternally grateful. But there, you know, these are not just floating rocks. There is an intelligence there. I think it's a very good idea as individual Jyotishis to intentionally have planetary darshan. The, the planet sees you, you see the planet, but the planet sees you. The planet can see your condition. What is the interchange here? Uh, if that's too fruity coming from the uh, a st a statement coming from the president of a college, well, then that's just too bad. Uh, but uh, and, and Saturn, you can find Saturn there. Saturn is about eight o'clock from Jupiter. Um, now, if you don't know what that means, make that your business to find out. We should be able to see these planets in the sky. Of course, it's easy enough to uh, to identify the the moon. There's a, just a stunning crescent moon in the in the western horizon now. There's power that comes from these planets. I mean, why not? You know, it's free. It's not, you don't have to pay the cable bill to see to see the moon or Jupiter or Saturn. Uh, so I know I went off on a tangent there, but I hope I hope that's helpful to you. It's my job to say, here's what a here's what a real Jyotishi does. A real Jyotishi knows where the planets are in the sky. And um, you know, ideally you could have get some kind of mutually beneficial darshan from looking at them. Ram Dasbil, you'll have to tell me if I've gone too far off the off the ledge here with this kind of conversation. Um, you have absolutely not gone too far off the ledge. Every night out my bedroom window, I can see Jupiter and Saturn rising. Oh, and wow. I went down to the water to see the comet. Everyone's staring at the comet. And then I was right behind. If you turn the other way, you could see Jupiter and Saturn. And this lady asked, what are you looking at? And I said, see those two lights? I said, they won't be together again for 30 years. You know, so when you sort of think about that, it, it's it, it's developing that personal connection. I totally agree with what you're saying. It helps. Well, that's my intention to give helpful information, no matter how romantic or poetic it sounds. And um, and that's the other thing about, uh, about doing accurate, uh, useful, effective consultations is um, I, I think it's valuable to be able to be, as I just said, either romantic or poetic or, or uh, you know, abstract 
and to be also very, you know, very concrete uh, in terms of this is very likely to happen on this particular day. Uh, or, you know, and, and another thing that if I didn't, now if I'm repeating myself that it bears repeating, I want to reassure you that uh, in the past, whatever you've studied, whatever you've studied, uh, you, you bring that to your, um, you bring that to your Jyotish consultations, don't you? Anything that you know about can be used for, uh, used on your client's behalf. Um, no matter what you used to do in your real life before you came up, became a full-time credentialed professional practicing Jyotishi. Yes, that's who you are. Uh, any, anything that you used before that uh, is, is useful. And having said that, the extension of that idea is that um, become broadly educated. One must know about history. One must know geography. One must know sociology, psychology, uh, cultural systems, rel religions. One, a, practi a professional practicing Jyotishi to be useful must know all of these things. Um, I mean, maybe you already know that, but I'm just emphasizing that point. Anything that you already know can be brought to the table in a, in a consultation to, to assist a client. Um, the other day I had an, uh, a, a really famous opera star as a client and she was born, we were rectifying her chart, which is a whole other topic and never mind about that. But we were ostensibly, we were supposed to be rectifying her chart. Uh, she, I believe that she had the sun in the, she was born at sunrise, she had the sun in the first house. And so, because I have to use whatever language is available to, to connect with the mind of my client. I mean, I knew who this lady was. I hope she's not in the audience. I, I'm not, uh, you won't be able to, she won't be able to, we won't be able to identify who she is. But I, I knew that she could understand this language. Uh, she was born with the son in the first house. I said, oh, this is just like in, the, the great story, Le Petit Prince from Antoine de saint exupéry where his flower said, oh, I'm born at the same time as the sun. Well, this lady just about, I mean, that stopped her cold. She said, that's my favorite book. Now, I'm not, I, I don't mean to sound pretentious offering something like that, but, but you, you know, you can, again, you can draw on your own personal experience to, that lady will remember it that I use that reference, that literary reference in, in talking, about, talking about her. She will not forget that she has got the sun in the first house, born at the same time as the sun. So um, that probably, that sounds a little pretentious even to me, but it's effective. And so I'm saying you can do the same thing. Larissa, who I hope is still listening, you know, she brings her, her medical training to the, to the table in a consultation and can talk to people, uh, you know, from that level too, but anything you know is useful. So continue your edu continue your education. But having said that, there's, I must be going off on a rant. Having said that, be very discerning about what you allow into your consciousness as well. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ugly things out there right now. I think that it's probably useful to filter that, to edit that, to avoid that. You don't need that in your consciousness, <clears throat> right? So, anything else? Um, we have a couple um, just questions I'll put out uh, that are coming in. Um, Eric said, thank you for that answer. Um, um, Tahia asked about if the discount if, discount, if Simon's still on the line, is good for the upgrade for Parashara's Light 2. So, I'm going to ask uh, her to just reach out to Parashara Light and ask them. They will know. Yes. <laughs> um, Freddie commented that Pluto takes 248 years, I think, to go around the entire zodiac. That's pretty amazing. Um, but yet has its own in, uh, influence. Um, Nadia stated that, um, and our list of good authors, of course, we surely should not forget Mr. Simon Tchaikovsky. And yes, I, was, I want to add. Work in Sanskrit. Yes, I wanted to add him, and then I thought, hmm, that probably sounds too nepotistic or something. But yes, his books are really, they're very modern and accessible. I highly recommend them. I've, I've benefited greatly from his work. I agree. Um, uh, Freddie asked about, um, he wrote, I understand about Mars 
but let's say it's in a house that your Mars is going to transit from the Lagna, what will happen for you? What? So Mar I think I think he's asking about, so I think the general answer is of course, depending on where, which house Mars is gonna transit, it will affect the outcome for your house, for that particular house. Okay, um, if Mars- so if, Freddie, if you wanna clarify that, if it, you know, it depends on if Mars is a, Mars is a malefic. There's no doubt oh, about it. Even if, oh, even wait, Charlotte, Charlotte, yeah. he said, never mind. He'll call you for a consult. <laughs> okay, God bless you. Um, but, okay, we'll just leave it at that. But again, this brings out the point whether, whether Mars is a functional malefic or a functional benefic. And, you know, it doesn't have to be malefic. You, you know, that's the reason that people pay good money to talk to somebody like me or you is, uh, okay, Mars is coming up and is in a dodgy position, perhaps. This means, as I so charmingly say to clients I know, I say, you know, you're operating from, you're not operating from a position of power here. So put up and shut up. I say that with my hands folded because I really mean that. But again, I'm a Westerner. They, do, they are not going to forget that statement. If, if Mar Mars is in a, if that position of Mars is in a dodgy placement, it says, you know, don't draw a line in the sand live to fight another day or put up and shut up uh you'll save time by doing that um so that's I good I mean, I sent a clarification saying he's asking um how would you approach he says uh when doing a consult with someone how would how would you approach mars i think that's just what you're saying you know when we have the big malefics coming into someone's let's say ascendant or something, I think he's asking about bad, you know, challenging news. Well, the, you- I hope I'm interpreting that right, Freddie. Well, okay, so here's the thing. You, there's always something you can do about this, isn't there? There's always something you can do about it. That's why, as I keep saying, you pay good money to an astrologer to say, oh, look at this, Mars is stationary, uh, stationary on your ascendant or something like this. Uh, here's what I often say as a practical matter. To a client, I say, "Do you have plans for this for this uh, for this time? Oh, do you have plans for September eighth or ninth? And they'll either will or they won't. And I'll say, "Well, I brought that up because this might, you know, this is going to be a time where you need to be extra due diligent. That's another term I use frequently. Due diligent. That's a completely neutral statement. It doesn't mean uh, sound the alarms. It says, you know, pay attention here. And even that simple statement." Pay attention, watch what you're doing, be more mindful, slow down, etc. do your spiritual practices. There's always something you can do. So if I think that you take the approach to, um, you know, look at, uh, look at a, the potential for a badly behaved Mars, uh, you know, just really be, uh, be even more attentive about your, about what you're doing and how you're reacting, how you're reacting, just watch it. I know I'm repeating myself now because I can't, I can't think of uh, something more sophisticated to say about Mars. However, here's my concept about how to manage the planets. And I say this with all due respect, that I believe that the visible planets, that's anything out, out to Saturn, can be managed through your own choices, through your own practice, your, and your own choices and your, and your, and your own actions. Planets, the invisible planets such as Rahu Ketu, any of the upagrahas that you might use, I don't use them, don't tell anyone that, uh, or the outer planets. Uh, now those are issues of, of fate or destiny or something that can intrude. But looking at retrograde Mars, with all due respect to Mars, this is something that you can manage by putting up and shutting up. I say with all due respect. So I hope that's, that's I hope that's useful. Yeah, Freddie asked, um, do you make recordings of your consultations to give to your clients? Do you give recordings or not? Yeah, yes, but no. Yes, I require, I, I, I don't insist, but I almost require recordings uh, because I talk, uh, here's what I say to my clients. Yes, please record the, please record the session. I have my clients record the sessions. I have Mercury in Pisces, as I freely admit. If you want to record it, there's plenty of ways for you to figure out how to do that. If you're motivated to record it, which I almost insist upon you doing, please do. So um, yes, it must be recorded. I talk quite quickly, as you can probably tell, I have a Mars-Mercury conjunction. 
I really don't give my clients time to process the information. I say, listen to the recording after. You can process this information on your own time. I'm here to tell you as much as I can in 90 minutes. So yes, recordings are essential. And not only that, <clears throat> while a client is recording on Zoom or Skype or whatever, however they're doing it, I say, please also take paper note, take notes on paper. So yes, recording is essential. Thank you for that very practical, uh, that very that practical uh, question. So, anything else? No. Shall I keep going? Uh, well, I guess since we're almost at the end of our session. Sorry, Sorry oh. I didn't click off. Oh. Um, I forgot to unmute myself. So I just want to let you know we are recording this. It will be posted on YouTube for everyone to um, see. Right, Charlotte? <laughs> I think yes. So. yes. Well, okay, again, I'm a heretic. It's, uh, this, my secret is out. Um, but yes, of course, yes, please. It's my intention to be useful. If this is useful, yes, let's go. Um, so some people are asking what the subject will be next time. Well, that's a good question. Um, what would you like? All right. So my approach here is that uh, I, I, I told I told my college, the American College of Vedic Astrology, that I would have that I would offer my time for a session as long as I didn't have to prepare too much in advance. I don't have time to prepare slides for a presentation. But I think that that's a very good question. My, as I stated, my intention is to be useful. What would be most useful? Maybe we should. Sub, maybe we could. Sub, maybe you could submit your questions in advance. Uh, I mean, I'm up for anything, as you can probably tell. Um, so, or even if you think of questions over the next month, um, first of all, be sure you've, you've registered for the series. So we'll be happening the sec the third. Saturday, I think of each month. So just write as you go through the month and you have a question, jot it down, and then we'll just take them in order. Um, maybe we'll formalize this as we develop the series, but uh, thank you so much. Um, I don't think we're doing um, USA elections on this format, but maybe uh, Charlotte could share some tips on how we would approach doing them. Yes. You know, you can ask anything. I mean, because like we have a, a, a world class, very experienced astrologer. So it's a great opportunity to say, like, oh my God, like, how do you handle this type of analysis? How do you handle that? That would be very helpful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I mean, I can, I think I probably have the experience to comment on just about anything, uh, given enough, given some advance notice. and. Uh, you know, talking about the U.S. elections, oh, good Lord. I, I do want to say, though, uh, j just to touch on that just very briefly, uh, you know, I mean, as you well know, I'm a big advocate of the use of the outer planets. And as it so happens, uh, some intelligent person in our, uh, in our audience uh, commented on the fact that Pluto has a 248-year cycle. Yes, it does. And uh, d does that meant to diminish the power of Pluto? No, because we well know that the slower a planet moves, the more power it has, right? It's a simple idea. The slower a planet moves, the more power it has. Of course, uh, Saturn moves very slowly, has a lot of, a lot of power. Rahu Ketu, obviously. Uh, stationary planets, the, the, you know, the, the, the power there is, is obvious because they're not moving at all. Um, but the United States is having its first Pluto return. The United States is having a near-death experience. I'm just going to put that out there. Pluto is the planet of birth and death and rebirth. The United States is having a Pluto return. We could easily make the case that this is the death of democracy in the United States unless people really start paying attention. So um, paying attention, I mean, by acting uh, appropriately to preserve democracy. So uh, that makes a comment both on the elections, somehow obliquely, and uh, the power of Pluto. Uh, so, uh, but I'll be prepared to comment on that next time we meet, uh, if, that, if that works for you. So. Uh, and someone asked if they want to send questions, where should they send it? Um, to, uh, what, uh, what, uh, there's a, um, 
Ram Das, isn't there a registrar page? I should know this. Uh, the registrar page for the uh, American College of Vedic Astrology, just so they I, could be collated there. I, I, I think it's, it's registrar at aquaonline.com. Uh, is it .org or .com? Oh, sorry, it's .org. I always yeah. make that mistake. Aquaonline.org, send it to the registrar at, and that will go, I think, Charlotte, you monitor that one, right? Well, I'm, I, I will monitor, yes. Don't send yeah. it to my, don't send it, please don't send it to me. I've got too many emails, but yes, yep. send it to uh, send registrar. It to registrar. We should just sort them through and then we can have them. But great, everybody. Thank you so much. We're at 11.30. Thank you, Charlotte, for so generously sharing your time and knowledge. Um, and I ask everyone online, tell your friends about this. We had a very good turnout today, but we can, we'll be doing this every month. And I think it's a valuable uh, part of building the Jyotish community. Excellent. Namaste. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.